Hello everyone, my name is Gil and this is the second devlog on Back to the Streets. On the previous episode I exposed my background in game development prior to this project and explained the motivation behind it. On this episode let's have a quick look at Evolution Engine, the first beat'em up engine that I worked on. It consists essentially in two parts, the data editors and the game engine itself. I chose in Java to code the editors using the NetBeans EDA. It was chosen to boost development. And it worked pretty well. The character editors came up in about one month of development. Then I started the game engine in C++ using the library SFML, Simple and Fast Multimedia Library. This option was intended for cross-platform and robustness. The, co the chosen EDA was CodeBlocks. As a side note, all the tools are linked in the video description. Once I had some characters loading in the game, I coded all the physics and animation mechanics, and with the combat system implemented, I moved to tiling, layering and scene editors and the respective supporting game. I didn't have time to spend on debugging features, so the way experimenting things in game was as rogue as writing in a text file which scene and which characters to load. There were other options that could be set, of course, such as gravity and many combat parameters. The game data was encrypted, or at least the code was ready to do so. There was editors for everything, and I was working on weapons editor, language and goodies editors when I decided to cancel the project. And why did it stop? Well, one reason was that the code wasn't as organized as I'd like. <laughs> well, okay, a developer is never happy with code organization. And for a project done on solo at free times, it gets even worse. I realized some errors I did in the beginning when structuring things, such as having a rigid set of animations and hard-coded transitions between them. There was also a redundancy in frame animation editors, there was one editor for character animations and one for background animations, two different editors that worked essentially in the same way. This was because I didn't talk about background animations when I started. The character's behavior was somewhat difficult to read and scattered in the codes, difficult to maintain and to add new moves, and it got even worse when things started crashing. The other reason is that I decided it doesn't worth it if it doesn't have netplay. And netplay is something you have to think about in the beginning, because it's virtually impossible to introduce it later without changing the entire code. Hmm. Meanwhile, with the Eve demos exposed in YouTube, and an increased interest of mine on hacking the original game, that led me to meet a guy known as Red Crimson. He talked me a lot about hacking the Streets of Rage game. I, uh, I combined my experience on EVE character editors with Red Crimson reverse engineering knowledge to produce some neat editors in Java to easily hack the original games. Ok, that's a whole other story, but I mentioned it because it gave me an even deeper knowledge on how beat'em ups work inside, in particular the Streets of Rage games. I could analyze how the original developers structured the data and how animations were coded, and that knowledge is gold for who's willing to do a new beat'em up. I didn't give up on Eve and wanted to start it over and this time with Netplay. So some months later I started doing experiments in C++ for a deterministic game engine with save, load, state, replay and Netplay features. At the time I kept calling it Eve, but now I gently call it New Eve to distinguish from the first. So New Eve was composed by the, the network code, the state synchronization code and the package downloader. It was designed to be very flexible, allowing for user content to be stored online and automatically downloaded when necessary for an online match. I remember using template programming a lot in this project. It was in I was investing hard in structuring the code this time. 
Unfortunately, I couldn't find its latest code. Only some network experiments survived, which consists of a simple space game. Player spaceships moving, spawning bullets and killing each other. That was a good test on state synchronization between network players. How did the network work on the, on the new EVE? Well, I'm not going to explain that now. I promise to do an episode entirely dedicated to the network layer. It worked well on the new EVE and I'm using the same concept on Back to the Streets. New EVE was something planned big. There's even a software architecture document about the project. In part I did that document as an exercise, something I learned at the university at the time. There was also a more advanced uh, character editor made in C++ as part of another university project. It was called Open Spriter. It was intended to be open source and to be used by others. Unfortunately, I couldn't find either source code or a working build. Only a screenshot and a few photos. Other editors were planned to be part of some sort of beat em ups creator studio. So, of course, this new Eve was too ambitious for a single person and so it was also cancelled. That concludes this episode. Again, I conclude an episode with a cancellation. <laughs> I won't go any further into Eve details. Um, the source code of Eve, uh, well, the, the one that was possible to recover, the source code is now open source on GitHub. The most curious ones can find the link on the description and hopefully one can pick it up and play a bit with it. Perhaps even build a working prototype of your own. On the next episode, the hope is back. I will talk about the first beat-em-up prototypes that I did with Unity. Deeper in the technical details this time, I will be explaining how character behaviors is defined and how scene scrolling and enemy spawning works. Okay, so please express yourself, give your feedback on the comments, subscribe to the channel so you won't miss the next episode. Thank you very much for watching, cheers! <laughs>